everyone and welcome to another webinar session organized by Factana. Thank you for taking our time and joining us in this webinar session. Today's webinar will provide you insights on need for cloud services and why manufacturers need cloud and its need in the manufacturing industry. Hello, my name is Shweta and I am part of sales and marketing team at Factana. For those joining us for the first time and for those who have been part of our previous webinar, thank you for joining us back again today. We are glad to have you here. Allow me a moment to quickly brief you about Factana and our offerings. So basically, Factana is an industry 4.0 solution provider. Factana has been supporting multiple small, medium and large enterprises in their process of adopting industry 4.0 and digitalizing manufacturing operations. We are a global company with operations in India, Europe and the USA. A quick brief on our product suits. Fogwing is the industrial cloud offering various digital solutions for industry 4.0. Fogwing IIoT offers connecting to machines and assets for data aggregation. Asset Plus Performance Management is our next product which is our exclusive industrial asset condition monitoring solutions to enhance production, efficiency, predict and prevent machines failure. The next product would be s Factories AI, which is our, our smart manufacturing execution software for digitizing shop floor operations to ensure operational efficiency, quality compliances and maximize ROI. Mr. Hariharan Ganesh, who is the founder as well as chief architect of Factana will be presenting the webinar. And also before getting started, a quick note to everyone. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. You can post your questions in the chat box, which will be answered towards the end of the webinar in the Q&A session. So without further delay, let me hand over to Hari. Hari, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Thanks for the introduction. Good evening, uh, good morning, and good afternoon, all of you, wherever you are connecting. So just a quick note, after this webinar, this video, uh, this webinar video will be available in our YouTube channel. So you can um, watch on the YouTube channel. So today um, we are here to talk about cloud computing for the manufacturing industry. Just to understand, you know, uh, just to bring all of us in a common common understanding before we talk about the importance of uh, moving into cloud computing for the manufacturing industry. Let's take a look at, you know, some of the data that points that we have gathered. So we are in the digital, digital period and we are creating, there is estimation that we are creating um, 1.7 um, MB of data per second per person um, across global. So, and uh, which means that, you know, we are creating a huge data sets with the considering 5 billion uh, people are using internet. As it's estimated, there were 79 uh, zettabytes of uh, data um, created uh, last year. Um, which is significantly huge data sets created um, by us um, for one year itself. So just to understand, you know, how, why cloud computing um, is required, um, just to, to start with some basic foundation. Um, so if we are uh, creating such high volume of data, which is crucial in today's business as well as personal uh, in personal uh, aspect. So just to take account on, you know, if you are, if you are creating one uh, petabytes of uh, data and we have to store that and store that in, uh, in somewhere in our servers, um, we, if we have to set up our own data center and store that in our servers, we might require uh, 42 racks of SanDisk and, and continuous maintenance 
power space um, and team of people to manage it. It's estimated that around one point three million dollar opex is required, capex and opex is required to to manage just one petabytes of data for just for storing purpose. If we have to process the data that we have stored in our data center, um, that requires more than ten times of the uh, processing capability compared to the storage that we hold. So, which means that uh, it's it's going to be more than ten million dollars of investment required for the five five years period to to run to store and process the data that we are creating. So, such level of high volume of data cannot be stored at the local data center. So, definitely need a large um, multi-region uh, storage capacity. Uh, which obviously fulfilled by their cloud computing systems. But is that cloud computing just for storage purpose? Uh, not really. Storage is one basic um, need where we might we have to go to cloud without investing huge investment upfront and also you know uh, scaling up as the data grows. But also uh, cloud computing is is another is a data center that available on demand basis for us which means that we may start with a smaller footprint of uh, uh, cloud uh, cloud uh, service or cloud uh, consumption of cloud services uh, by storing and processing data as we as the as we grow our data as the data gets you know increase significantly we can continue to scale up the uh, the computing power that required uh, to process the data. So not just uh, data storage and processing, but also uh, cloud computing. The basic understanding about cloud computing is, you know, um, it's a, of course, it's a lower cost of uh, ownership uh, upfront. Um, of course, secondly, we, we looked at that it's a scalable, so we can start with smaller footprint and we can scale up from there. Um, it's a multi-regional support, so we don't need to create a different data center in different regions for our business and operational needs. We we can have a cloud services uh, available different region to, to, to start using for the disaster and recovery that, that provides a, a high business continuity um, in terms of the availability of the servers um, are highly committed by the uh, providers um, and high availability. So we don't need to invest time and um, effort on cost and effort on um, managing the operations uh, to make sure it's highly available uh, for our business operations. Um, and finally, the security. So um, in terms of the security, but there is a there is a common concern on the security in terms of security, um, especially in the manufacturing industry. And that's a, that's a core reason for this, uh, this session itself, since we wanted to, uh, you know, we have been hearing this question from many um, manufacturing um, customers that we have spoken. And um, and one of the common questions is data security and security aspect of that. Uh, concern itself is that. So we wanted to address that in this call. So we will talk about you know how and why it's uh, it's much better than managing on premise. So just uh, just to you know um, reconfirm that you know how much data get created. Um, so just another metrics that you know we brought here for for our uh, discussion. Um, globally, uh, uh, by end of this year, uh, it has been projected that um, the cloud computing market has been growing significantly because there is a huge demand in, uh, in the industry. Many uh, global industry um, business are uh, moving into cloud computing um, to leverage the uh, services provided by uh, the computing, uh, the uh, cloud providers. Um, also, you know, as the market is growing, um, the need for uh, as the industries are adapting more and more in cloud computing, the need of business itself is growing. The need of comp uh, cloud computing business itself is growing. In addition to that, you know, you can see also see that you know how the um, the cloud computing, global cloud computing, is shared between different um, industries. Um, banking and financial sectors are the leading. Um, consumer and the cl cloud computing uh, consumers, and they are the significant user on on the scale. The second uh, most are IT and telecom uh, industries. However, you know, of 
course we are uh, we are going to talk about manufacturing so manufacturing is um is still you know there is a good adoption in that but it's uh, com compared to other industry manufacturing is is the lowest uh, um on the adoption rate um so we are we wanted to you know uh, talk about you know why um why uh, the manufacturing is the one who should uh, or the manufacturers are the one who should um adopt the cloud computing because they are the huge data generators compared to other industries so we'll talk about that in this session um so when we talk about cloud technologies and cloud and what is the value in that so some of the significant um points uh, that we should think about and how the adoption is rate is um so generally in the cloud computing available in the, in the three model um, the infrastructure as a service, um, the upper layer is uh, platform as a service, the top layer is a software as a service. Um, basically, it's a hardware uh, service. Um, then some level of hardware and software combination. Um, and third one is pure software uh, software as a service. Um, you know, the users also different. The infrastructure architects mostly spend on um, infrastructure services. Software developers spend most of the time on the platform and services to build this application systems and all. Um, end users, typically the SaaS users, um, predominantly the business users, um, consume the uh, pre-built software apps and systems. Uh, but also, if, if what we are noticing here is um, compared to uh, SMB versus enterprise, um, enterprise have their capacity, they have their own um, you know, uh, IT team, large IT team to manage, run and manage their own um, application systems and all. So the adaption at the enterprise levels are mostly on the uh, on the IAS, uh, the infrastructure service, as well as the platform service, because they have a huge IT team to uh, to build the uh, solution that requires for the business. Um, on the other side, uh, small and medium business. Um, mostly uh, accepting and start leveraging the um, SaaS solutions as well as the some level of uh, uh, platform service. Um, it's probably the mid-size companies slightly uh, utilizing, more utilizing the platform service, uh, but smaller SMBs are hugely dependent on these SaaS services. So, so everybody, the value for, for each uh, size of the enter business is different. So if the if the uh, enterprise is looking for uh, uh, infrastructure service as well as platform service, so the value that they are getting out of that is completely different than the uh, SaaS um, you know value that uh, given to the SMBs. Um, of course, commonly it's it's you know it's a lower cost of investment for both parties and a pay per usage basis. So they they can start small and then can grow the footprint. Um, very important is jumpstart uh, the digital practice, uh, especially for the SMBs. Um, if they wanted to start, um, you know, utilizing software services for the business operation, they can quickly jump into that. They don't need to um, put any effort in terms of the infrastructure development or application development. They just subscribe and start using the SaaS systems. Um, that's a quick, start, faster way. Um, we also see that uh, slightly enterprises moving towards SaaS, but compared to SMB, uh, the enterprises uh, leveraging SaaS is uh, lower than that. Mm. And auto, um, you know, of course, when you talk about cloud, it's, a, it's automatic scalable. You may start with a smaller footprint of uh, SaaS or, or, or platform service, and then you can, as we grow, you know, you can build the storage and processing capacities. Um, one of the other big advantage in going into the cloud is, of course, it's a it's a, a, a multi-regional uh, services provided by the cloud provider. So obviously, disaster recovery, um, the backup business continues highly, um, highly uh, possible, uh, highly uh, you know uh, compliance to the need, a uh, business need uh, in the SaaS and PaaS models. Um, so that's how the value uh, is vary from. Uh, based on the level of industry and the size of the uh, company. So I think that that's enough, you know, let's move into the manufacturing side. Um, you know, let's talk about manufacturing uh, on why uh, manufacturers need uh, cloud computing. Um, again, you know, 
90% of the reason is all talk about the data. So we are going to give more importance to the data. Um, every business is looking at the data today. Um, data is playing a biggest role in the business operation, um, business growth, uh, and strategic uh, business uh, strategies as well. So, um, so while looking at the overall volume of uh, data get created across the global, including consumer level and industry level, but in this case, from the manufacturing side, um, you know, the major change happening across the, after the pandemic is on the uh, digitalization. So many manufacturers uh, realize that um, just having on-premise access uh, is not sufficient as the pandemic completely manufacturing business was uh, one of the most worst affected industry in that uh, due to physical presence and uh, productivity. Um, so moving into digital uh, is the, um, is the uh, biggest goal for even smaller uh, manufacturers uh, as they have seen the failure of you know on-premise uh, or going into the uh, physical locations they won't have a remote access remote visibility and things like that so digitalization is uh, is is significant or a need of digitalization is growing nowadays after the pandemic especially uh, it's predicted that by 2025 80 percentage of the manufacturers uh, some level of uh, digital adoption uh, should have happened or they may be in the process of uh, digitalizing their day-to-day uh, -day operations but manufacturing is a complex business um, where uh, there are various uh, departments uh, functions are involved from the processing to the uh, support systems like hr and finance especially um, you know um, the the core part of the manufacturing is about productivity uh, production as well as the quality department and uh, these uh, these two departments are the one who um, which might create um, huge amount of data due to the uh, physical activities happening on those uh, environment. And of course, the maintenance and supply chains are also adding up more and more data. So it is. Um, so if if the machines are connected and the machines are generating data as part of the digitalization, if the comp the manufacturer executing digitalize, they want to digitalize their um, shop floor operations to uh, top floor to shop floor. Uh, and obviously, they have to connect to the machines through IoT and uh, and AI-based services. Um, obviously, that's going to increase uh, ten times more data than the people generating today in the manufacturing side. Uh, that's that's a huge size generated by the machine itself, as machine could generate data every second. Uh, we do have some st statistics on that as well. I will I will talk about that later. Um, functional uh, team also generate five percent more data if it is digitalized. The manufacturing is going into digital systems. Um, external suppliers and partners who provide inputs, uh, they send the data in terms of the transactional data or the location data and 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 inventory data. All of them get added into the into the uh, stack uh, and historic of uh, quality metrics that created out of the um up these data you know get added into the into this uh, storage which required more storage more processing uh, and managing all of them in on premise data center is going to increase five times more of investment in it resources so obviously you know a uh, one side digitalization is going to help the business at the same time um running that on premise um is not is going to increase five times of the operational cost. So obviously, uh, such high level of data cannot be stored in the um, in the existing data center managed by the manufacturers, um, especially large manufacturers. So obviously, they have to move into the uh, into the cloud systems for storage processing um, to fulfill the uh, digitalization uh, process itself, uh, and uh, securing the data on premise could also lock the data and which has no value because the data is not consolidated in one place and processed in one place. Um, if it gets stored in on-premise, it cannot be accessed from outside and that completely dilute the uh, purpose of going into digitalization. So overall, uh, you know, um, as part of the digital journey, um, the first thing that manufacturers to consider and look into that is to moving into the cloud computing um, uh, services, each line of uh, manufacturing line, uh, basically the shop floor line, 
creating uh, 5,000 data points per every second, which is 50 lines. If you are looking at the 50 production lines, that could generate up to 34 terabyte of data per year. So per manufacturing for just a 50 line uh, line of productions. So that itself is a significant data to store and process it um, because it's all machine data. It's all data comes from the machine, which continuously running and keep on you know, throwing data out of that. Um, and also those data are very, very important for what? So the data that created by manufacturing are really required for uh, understanding the customer and uh, and the customer expectation ordering and the level of uh, the frequency of orders to predict the um, and the volume of business that's the growth and volume of the business the operational data metrics helps to understand how the machine operates how the uh, how the assets are operating um, what is the significant of the asset uh, productivity performance and also measuring, you know, measuring to prevent the um, the uh, asset failure. Um, the data that created by the quality team also helps to improve the quality of this uh, of the production um, by measuring the uh, compliances with the customer expectation and uh, uh, loss of poor quality um, and cost associated with that. Um, then data generated by supply chain team helps to. Um, understand the material availability, supply demands, suppliers, uh, you know, responses, and duration of the shipment, um, and uh, and and plan. Those data helps to plan the production execution itself, production planning and execution itself, um, and and other data like employee performance, uh, HR, payroll. Uh, all of them helps to understand the overall organizational uh, financial frequency. So every department uh, creating a data that all linked together in the manufacturing setup to come up with the overall manufacturing, uh, you know, the, the, the industries, the organization's performance uh, on across the quality production customer and internal, uh, you know, um, internal uh, cost expenses. So huge data get created uh, with the manufacturing obviously you know this data cannot be processed uh, locally by storing it uh, many manufacturing companies are especially larger companies are moving into this of course they are all uh, you know they have a team of uh, people to move into cloud uh, but small and medium sized companies are not aware of this kind of a scale and uh, they still are thinking that they could live with the on premise um you know center because of the uh, security concern which we will address later in this presentation itself so of course you know we are going to talk about not just a manufacturing you know we are going to talk about smart manufacturing or digital manufacturing um so basically smart manufacturing itself I mean, you know there are a lot of talks in the um, in the uh, in the in the global market about uh, smart manufacturing, um, but there are a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding as well. You know, smart manufacturing is all about um, technology. So we wanted to just uh, um, reiterate that <clears throat> smart manufacturing is all about you know what value that created by um, you know by the operations um, that helps the business to be smarter by predicting the production plan and execute the plan accordingly uh, creating a complete end-to-end -end traceability um, with the help of technology and also you know creating high yield on quality uh, by reducing the human error um, and uh, um, and machine falls which leads into you know better quality output um, that obviously you know help the manufacturers to save of course the lean operational aspect of that um you know it's also helps to uh, operate the factory floor in a day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance aspect uh, planning and predicting the routing card um all also you know help the help the operators and workforce to understand and use the digital technology properly um for better results so well trained workforce will lead into well trained um organization output <laughs> so Smart manufacturing drives value for business um, in terms of uh, operational improvement um, and also, you know, um, also plan and predict and execute. The value of smart manufacturing is um, it's how it's connecting the 
um, human machine to communicate each other, each other um, autonomous productivity and efficiency. So uh, that's a true value that comes out of the smart manufacturing, just to get the idea of what this means by smart manufacturing. So to build the smart manufacturing, yeah, so of course to build the uh, smart manufacturing, um, IoT is the foundation for that. So first and foremost is the connecting to the machines. Um, obviously, we have to use the technologies to do that. Uh, IoT helpful for connecting to the machine, start reading the machine uh, performance, productivity, uh, quality, availability, faults, uh, defects, um, and and things like that. And those data that created by the uh, by the machines uh, aggregated with the help of industry process for the analytical information. Such analytical information helps to identify the uh, course of actions um, uh, and uh, improve the business, uh, continuously improve the business uh, and help to predict um, uh, certain processes and, uh, and planning and executions. <clears throat> Additive or automotive uh, autonomous manual um, you know, um, technologies are helping to automate the process, reducing the workforce um, and uh, creating more accurate pro uh, product output uh, from the machineries. Um, and obviously that get integrated with the intelligence systems to create a complete intelligence driven uh, automation process. Um, of course, the digital twin is another thread um, which helps manufacturers to plan uh, certain process changes and see how the process change uh, impacts the business operation uh, by uh, virtually through simulations. And those simulations help them to uh, understand the impact before they uh, try to apply the processes. Today, in a, in a, in a traditional manufacturing, uh, manufacturer has to do the trial and error uh, to apply certain process changes to see the results uh, before they completely roll out to the uh, entire organization. Um, but obviously, that takes time and effort uh, for them to uh, you know uh, physically create the um, simulation and executing with the help of virtual simulation through digital twins. Um, this could be the time and effort required to create new product or new process could be significantly reduced. Uh, that leads into faster um, business results. So to build a smart manufacturing, there are many different technologies, they, but the fundamentally it's all related to the connectivity and intelligence. Uh, it depends on you know the, the type of uh, smart uh, capability that the manufacturer wants to build it. Uh, but we usually, when we approach it, we always approach it as a first step is to to get get connected with the machines um, and people, so we can gather the information. Okay, so um, so one of the most common question that asked to us by most of the manufacturer that we spoke. Um, related to cloud. So as soon as we say that cloud, from, we provide cloud-based services, um, the immediate, you know, it's coming out of the comfortness. So they basically uh, manufacture us. Of course, we understand the concern. Um, they they ask questions in terms of why not on-premise, why we should move into, uh, why we should use a cloud. Um, so many, uh, many of them have a, a mindset that uh, moving data out of their on-premise, uh, which leads into um, data uh, leakage and data security issues. Um, actually, um, that's uh, not uh, accurate because uh, if you have to if you have to host your data in your on-premise, um, even though today it's on-premise, uh, it's still in the network, and uh, somewhere it has to connect to the internet. You may not know that where which which portion of that is connected to the internet. So if it is already connected to the internet, even one portion of your data center is connected to the internet. Um, still, there is a many different ways um, the intruders can come into the system and they can uh, sneak into the different network and they can reach the final data system. Uh, it has been proven that many data centers um, operated by the banking and other uh, retail sectors um, got, um, you know, got um, infected with the, um, with the hacking. Um, and they came out of that and moved into the cloud systems. Um, the, when we talk about cloud systems, uh, this is a global infrastructure um, which provides um, various security uh, checkpoints 
um, which are highly, um, you know, highly uh, built uh, with intelligence on that. Um, so it can, so we can apply multi-level of security and also based on the market, uh, based on the, uh, you know, the protocols and other things changes, um, these layers of security get upgraded by itself. So if we manage all of them in on-premise, the organization is responsible to put the time and effort to track all the uh, security changes, the protocol changes, version updates, and applying patches to continuously making sure they are running their highly secure environment. But obviously, even, even if you run everything together, then you you have to take the data out if you want to move into the uh, to compete in the global market where you need a remote access. So um, from the cloud standpoint, cloud security standpoint, um, every cloud provider supports seven layer of uh, security uh, security pr protocols possibly. Um, but you know, uh, in terms of the um, most important layers, um, first thing is the network layer of security. Uh, obviously, you know um, where the data source is there, where the data gets stored uh, on the cloud. The end-to-end -end channel has must be secure. So there is no way uh, in, uh, you know, there is no way someone to uh, trap the data and get the data out. So the end-to-end -end security through the communication channel is important. Um, cloud providers are providing secure VPN network. Also, you know, providing other, uh, you know, um, you know, secure layer of communications to, uh, to have a firewall and things like that to put in place. And IPS based security provided by them to enable the channel quickly and easily without even worrying about that. And that they can that's take care of the um, uh, intrusion prevention. Um, also, you know, uh, we can apply the uh, zero trust network security to tightly binding their source and target uh, with the help of uh, you know uh, simple configurations. Um, and at the storage level security, um, cloud providers providing a data encryption. Um, from the point it reached the storage uh, till um, it it read it processed and stored further, uh, the end-to-end -end data security can be applied at the at the disk level, at the uh, storage level, at the processing layer level, at the uh, metrics level. So we can apply the data security at any layer, and logically we can segment that. The logical segmentation helps uh, to uh, separate the uh, critical informations into a different um, blocks so that you know uh, even if if any compromise in terms of the access, still the critical information won't be compromised. So separating the concern uh, into the logical layer, and data classification also helps to uh, even if it's a secure encrypted data can be classified into different category. That way, you know the level of security can be applied for the internal users versus the external users uh, based on the data classifications. So at the storage level, there are many different various uh, way to apply different level of security. It depends on uh, the level of security the organization wants to apply it um, on the storage level. On the, uh, then the finally, the access level in terms of user access, internal users access versus external user access. So um, the cloud providers are providing um, um, secure key management and key-based access level. So only uh, authorized, uh, you know, users will have the access, or the system will have the access, and and also user level authentication, access control can be applied, um, but tightly binding with the organizational AD. Therefore, you know, uh, you you make sure that only your trusted employee have the access to the data rather than um, it's exposed publicly, and also you know, this also helps. Um, you know, to identify which user is doing what activity in the system by uh, capturing the user behaviors uh, to detect it, you know, is there any, uh, you know, um, security flaw or is there any way that there's user compromising the secure information to any, anywhere else. So we can also track that level. So um, just to give, you know, high level, I'm not talking about every sec every other possibilities. Uh, just to give a high level, we can ensure the data at the network level. We can ensure the data is secure at the storage level. We can even ensure the data at the access level by tightly binding with the organization as if how the on-premise data security and access control is provided uh, within the organizations. So compared to managing um, security for the on-premise environment, 
moving into the cloud infrastructure provide much more uh, capability and flexibility and quickly manage the security requirements um, to, to make sure that our data are secured. So it's purely based on the organization, how they apply the security. It's not about, you know, uh, it's not about uh, cloud means everybody will have it. Um, mm -hmm. Cost value analysis. Um, so obviously next question that we have been asked most of the time is, you know, how, how it's going to help them the cost rise. Um, running on-premise versus, uh, you know, run moving the um, data into the cloud, especially from the manufacturing side. As we saw in the previous, uh, you know, um, in uh, metrics, uh, manufacturers are going to create uh, more data than any other business uh, due to the connectivity uh, that they are uh, to do the digitally connecting to the machines and that's going to create a huge number of data sets. Um, so obviously running in on-premise may not be cost effective compared to running into the um, cloud. So number one, um, we can say that, you know, um, CapEx investment, uh, upfront CapEx investment is significantly reduced. If you start with a smaller footprint, you can scale up there. Up to 43% of uh, impact value is added by moving into uh, cloud, by lowering your capital investment in terms of the setting up the storage, managing storage or processing uh, capabilities. Uh, moving into, um, you know, by moving data and your processing uh, requirements into the cloud, um, you also reduce your uh, existing data center operational cost. And um, that could also save um, significant value for you. Um, the impact is more than 34 percentage of uh, uh, impact, um, sorry, 38 percentage of impact um, by reducing the cost. So business can um, reduce the cost of operations. Um, software update, you know, moving into the, moving and start using a SaaS systems or even the platform as service, um, any of them, um, the software update is automatically happens in the system. So um, there is no need of, uh, you know, on-premise software management, no need of separate project creation for upgrade, no need of migration from one version to another version. So all of them is unnecessary, uh, you know, expenses added into the, uh, into the existing model, which can be completely avoided by moving into SaaS-based solutions. Um, especially manufacturers uh, should look for uh, more SaaS-based solution um, because they are their business is all about product production and uh, supplies. Uh, they are it's not about you know managing security, IT, and software management. So moving into uh, moving into the SaaS systems will help them to focus more on the business rather than. Uh, you know, all uh, technology area aspect of that. So more automated software upgrade is adding another significant cost savings uh, for the um, for the manufacturers when, when they move from the on-premise applications to the cloud applications, such as um, MRP or ERP. And uh, modernizing the um, uh, IT environment, um, legacy, modernizing the legacy IT environment um, is more on, you know, uh, is faster because moving into uh, newer infrastructure, newer computing power um, to process uh, data faster. Uh, if you move into cloud, uh, that could help the, uh, to achieve the, um, you know, technology um, requirements or technology solutions faster, 28% um, more faster than the on-premise approach of uh, building and deployment. Um, again, you know, moving into the cloud, uh, reduce the software cost, licensing cost. So just a subscription star cost on that. So that saves 26 percentage of the, um, uh, of the, uh, investment on that. Um, remaining, you know, reducing dependency, faster service, uh, faster services to business, all are all the significant impact, um, uh, based on all the, uh, moving into the cloud technology. So, um, the cost value aspect of that, you know, Cloud moving into the cloud still adds more um, value uh, for the uh, business uh, than running into the on-premise uh, based services. Um, now you know, you know when we're talking about uh, manufacturer moving into the cloud, you know there is a um, there is a new um, new uh, approach coming in into the market. 
um, especially you know moving into the industry specific cloud so we have so far we have talked about general cloud how the generally cloud can be adapted by the manufacturers um, now um, including us you know we are providing um, there are many different players providing uh, industrial clouds as an offering so um, industrial cloud is uh, is kind of a, a specialized category or or kind of a subsection of the uh, cloud computing where the technology services offered uh, specific to the industry purpose generally cloud computing is available for any different business and domain um, when coming to the industrial cloud uh, these industrial clouds are fine tuned to uh, to handle industrial data than the general data because industrial data is are huge data compared to other industries um, right now the adoption rate is less that's why it other like a banking and financial sectors are showing a huge uh, uh, consumer of the uh, cloud computing but as the manufacturers moving into the cloud computing uh, it's going to be the manufacturing industry is the one of the number one industry in, um, to consume the cloud systems effectively so uh, but when we are moving into that you know we don't need to be going into the general cloud computing we can move into the industry specific cloud computing because uh, the computing power uh, the the capability provided by the industrial cloud are fine tuned to accommodate the industrial data sets okay so now you know looking at the general pattern you know let's see how how where it will fit into that so uh, infrastructure as a service uh, obviously providing virtual machine network and uh, hosting traffic um, we saw that in it's mostly adopted by the enterprises um, which require more configurations uh, in terms of the um, hardware configurations uh, setting up the infrastructure required to run that whereas in you know platform as service uh, manufacturers can use the platform as services to connect to the machines um, and uh, gather the data um, you know process the data or integrate with applications that exist in on premise and cloud as well until they completely move into the cloud technology cloud computing or cloud based services they have to live with on premise as well so they can build the integration between the cloud system versus on premise system to make sure the data movement between that and with the help of etl tools or or, or apis esb or even i am connecting to the machines through iot's so uh, iot uh, and uh, data integrations are part of the plas, uh, platform as service um, where um, you know some level of development is required uh, to connect to the machines get the data or connecting to the application send and receive the data um SaaS systems are like you know pre-built uh ready to use software systems uh, which can can be easily adopted by the manufacturers without uh spending effort in infrastructure without spending effort in the uh developing the integration capabilities uh, some level you may do that but you don't need to fully do that um many cloud-based mrp uh, crm mes providers uh, are uh, you know providing the integration capability along with the apps capability so um, zero zero down uh, development time so manufacturers can quickly jump into the uh, uh, systems and start subscribing it and then move their uh, digitalize their operational process into into the cloud systems uh, without spending um, you know huge effort in terms of development and rollout process and all so um so the real value for um, industrial cloud and coming to the industrial cloud the most applicable areas are pass and uh, sas um, so industrial cloud uh, by default um, you know in inheriting the uh, or all the virtual network is required to process the huge volume of data um, the industrial clouds are more intended for quick and rapid way uh, for the manufacturers to adapt the um, the sas solutions uh, especially the core uh, business applications um, faster. So, um, so we are, uh, you know, from the industry cloud standpoint, yes, we are one of the, uh, you know, leading industry cloud provider, um, specialized in uh, providing the uh, uh, solutions, both the platform as service as well as the uh, SaaS solution um, aspect of that. Um, to the manufacturers uh, to connect to the systems uh, and uh, you know adapt the digital technology digital processes 
and practices faster. So um, on that aspect, you know, we are uh, providing a um, um, industrial IoT platform for connecting to the machines, uh, aggregate the data, analyze the data. Um, that is a foundation for your smart manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, transformation. Um, then once you have the data, then you can, uh, the machine data is available. Then with that, I would like to uh, conclude that, um, you know, um, every industry is moving towards cloud. Uh, manufacturers are a uh, little uh, lag on that due to the concerns of on-premise versus cloud security. Uh, but more than that concern, the data, the data usage is the biggest concern that they should have, how they are going to leverage the data, how they are going to come up with the uh, intelligence out of that to improve the business uh, operations, improve the business uh, and look for the business growth, innovating new products. So compared to the data security, the business growth is very important. Uh, concern from the business standpoint. So moving uh, into or transitioning into the digital along with adopting the cloud computing is the most uh, advisable approach where they can uh, leverage the data to drive uh, digital values um, out of the implementation or transformation journey that they have going to go through. Uh, with that, I would like to, Sweta, over to you. Uh, thank you, Hari, for the deep insights. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, I request to them to answer those. I'll be reading them one by one, and then you can respond them. So the first question would be, which manufacturing segment? Of course, you know, everyone uh, should go into that. But if, if, if we are looking for most, um, most important um, um, one, I would say that um, the discrete manufacturing companies, um, which provide um, significant um, product, pharma companies, one case, um, discrete manufacturing, pharma manufacturing, uh, especially automotive um, manufacturers um, and uh, pharma manufacturers, um, energy usage based uh, or energy, man, uh, energy based um, um, manufacturing industries uh, like oil and gas. Are, are the uh, are critical to move into the cloud because of the large volume of data sets they have uh, they should uh, mm, they should okay thank you so much hari uh, we do have another question uh, as you mentioned through the presentation uh, in between as well how are you saying that security is better in cloud security uh, of course you know we have gone through that um, so basically you know when coming to the on-premise security, um, it may appeal like, you know, oh, I have data center next to me and I'm sitting there and I'm monitoring every day. And I see that, you know, I'm monitoring the traffic. I'm monitoring, I'm blocking, not anyone get into the, into the data center, external parties getting into the data center. This data center is, uh, and my data is only accessible within my uh, organizational network. Uh, it may be, you know, appearing like that, but, um, actual security flaws are happening not directly through the channel uh, they are all happening through uh, you know uh, in um, in unknown uh, track of uh, you know um, back uh, through the other network which are not visible to us um, so which basically um, somehow you know they can get into the uh, network through the um, any open port any open channel um, that could have even by coming through the um, you know simple email itself so it can open up a, a challenge uh, and expose certain data to external parties without even aware of that so the security is a very large topic uh, and um, very large topic and very aggressively uh, changing um, you know market itself the every time these uh, the the security compromise happening there is a new protocol new change new way of uh, addressing the concern is coming into the picture and that has to be applied immediately um, so uh, to to manage that itself we required a huge uh, security expert and uh, specialist within the organization to understand and apply the securities but when we're moving into the cloud computing cloud providers uh, obviously uh, they have all the security uh, you know expertise um, at these uh, at the service level 
and and they are uh, ensuring that all the um, you know all the security measures are applied as and when the market is changing as and when the incidents are reported as and when the the protocol patches are apply, coming up so they get ensured that you know they are complete uh, protecting the uh, entire cloud infrastructure so by by comparing that uh, you know uh, managing on premise data security is more costly um actually uh, so energy energy is definitely uh, getting a lot of attention um especially um steel manufacturing or uh, you know mining based manufacturing companies uh, who process large volume of uh, you know um, um you know energy usage like a gas energy or electrical energies um such level of companies are giving high importance to the energy monitoring than any other um, you know machine condition or mes or even environmental monitoring um, i think the environmental monitoring is uh, is very low compared to uh, any other things um but it's again depends on the industry mm, if it is a, a you know energy based emission uh, operating companies they put more of more into energy monitoring um, but if it is a um, you know automotive parts or uh, or pharma manufacturers um, you know they are all providing more uh, importance to the mission condition monitoring uh, than the uh, energy monitoring um, me is also getting attraction but i would say that energy is first for the um, energy dependent industry uh but other industries are you know expecting uh kind of a mixing together like a machine machine performance and oe metrics most of the common question that we are getting is i want to monitor the machine as well as, well as the oe so but it's actually two different things machine may not provide everything to build the oe so um great uh thank you hari i believe that was all the questions we had thank you for answering every question i hope it was helpful for all who have asked and for others as well now i think it's time to wind up the webinar as informed by hari earlier we would be posting the recorded version of this webinar on our factana youtube channel so you can check out this as well as our previous webinar sessions on our youtube channel and for those who are seeking more insights on iiot industry 4.0 and smart factory you can check our blog section by visiting www.fogwing.io/blogs and start exploring also if at all you are looking for any collaborations and engagement you can reach us out on sales@factana.com that's all for today once again thank you for joining this session and making it a success we look forward to connecting with you in our next webinar have a nice day thank you everyone have a nice day